Om, om nu kör jag. Om Sadashivasamaramacharya Pariyantam Vande Guru Parampara Om Sahana Bhavatu Sahana Bhunaktu Laviryam Karvavahai So, Tanmayji, could you just start from 225 up to 229? The bird, right? Napraane na napaane na, Martyo jivati kashchana, Martyo jivati kashchana, Itare na tu jivanti, Itare na tu jivanti, Yasmin neta vupashritau, Yes, Mita Atma Bhavati Gautama Atma Bhavati Gautama Yoni Manye Prapatyante Yoni Manye Prapatyante Shari Ratvaya Dehinaha Shari Ratvaya Dehinaha Sthanu Manye Nusayanti Sthanu manye nu samyanti Yatha karma yatha shrutam Yatha karma yatha shrutam Ya esha supte shu jagarti Ya esha supte shu jagarti Kamam kamam purusho nirmimanaha Kamam kama purusho nirmimanaha Tadeva shukram tad brahma Tadeva shukram tad brahma Tadeva amrita mujjate Tadeva amrita mujjate Tasmin loka shrita sarve Tasmin loka shita sarve. Tadunati tikashchana. Tadunati tikashchana. Etat vaitat. Etat vaitat. Agnir yat haiko bhuvanam praveshtaha. Agnir yat haiko bhuvanam praveshtaha. Rupam rupam prati rupo babhuva. Rupam rupam prati rupo babhuva. Ekastha sarva bhuta antaratma. Ekastha sarva bhuta antaratma. Rupam rupam prati rupo bahishcha. Rupam rupam prati rupo bahishcha. Acharya, you're muted. We can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Okay. So, <clears throat> look at the words. Na prane na na apane na. So, Na panena is to na apanena. Martyo jivati kaschana. Itarena to jivanti. Yasmin neta upashitau. So na pranena. Not by prana. Na apanena. 
नॉर बाय अपाना क्वेश्चन मर्त्य जीवति तो मर्त्य मींस अ मॉर्टल बीइंग वन सब्जेक्ट टू डेथ इज कॉल्ड मर्त्य एनी मॉर्टल बीइंग न जीवति ही डज नॉट ही इज नॉट अलाइव बिकॉज़ ऑफ प्राणा ही इज नॉट अलाइव बिकॉज़ ऑफ अपाना आल्सो so it is not because of prana or apana in short it's not because of the sukshma shariram that the stool shariram is alive so very pertinent statement is it the sukshma shariram which gives life to stool shariram what is the no. question no but that is what we normally say right it is because of sukshma shariram only that thula shariram is alive why is that only atma no i mean any explanation has to be comprehensive okay <laughs> you can't just shoot off one line and say its explanation because even the sukshma shariram is a dependent on uh, the atma mm. to enlighten yes it. can you expand on that the sukshma sharira reflects brahma yeah. which is then further reflected in the sthula right. so sthula shariram cannot reflect consciousness it is only directly it is only the sukshma shariram which reflects the consciousness and that sukshma shariram when it is in contact with sthula shariram it appears that sthula shariram has consciousness and therefore he says na pranena apanena it is not because of sukshma shariram or the jnana indriyas that these thula shariram appears to have life and therefore to but jivanti so you have to add here martaya jivanti the jivas live they appear to be alive itarena because of something else and what is that something else yasmin etau upasitau etau means these two these two are pra- pranena and apanena so upashrita means dependent upon so yasmin etau upashrita it is because of something else on which these two which is to say on on which the sukshma shariram depends it is because of that that the stula shariram has life this means sukshma shariram itself is dependent upon that and what is that eta dvaitate that indeed this indeed is that o nachiketas it is an atma which you talked about the nachiketas and what is the logic so the logic you have to look at shankara bhashya shankara bhashya shankara says that hesham samhritya these organs are all part of a samhritya samhritya is a assembly it's a unit assembled using parts and to esham hi samhritya all these organs which is to say he is talking about the 17 or the 19 organs of the sukshma shariram they are all part of an assembly and that assembly what does it do parartanam karitvat it functions for the benefit of someone else it's a very very important statement none of the organs of the sukshma shariram in fact the sukshma shariram itself it is not functioning for its own sake right so it is like taking any assembly you take in the car for example when the car is started it is functioning for the benefit of the owner and similarly here he says this sukshma shariram is not functioning for the benefit of the sukshma shariram itself but it is parartana functioning for somebody who is outside this assembly he is outside the assembly and we can add here that all these parts are inert because any component of an assembly of any composite assembly is inert and therefore in creation everything is inert this we have to supply both at individual micro level vyashti level and at macro level samashti level also. and therefore shankara says jeevan hetutvam na upadyati upadyati upapadyati jeevan hetutvam na upapadyati this assembly or the parts of the assembly cannot be the cause of giving life to the body 
So the Sukshu syndrome cannot be the cause of giving life to the body. It is because of the consciousness reflected by that Sukshu syndrome. It is because of Brahman, Atma reflection in the subtle body that this, this gross body, the Thula syndrome appears to have life. So this mantra is, is you can say it is in answer to an unsaid question from Nachiketas. How can Atma leave the body? Because earlier Yama said that Atma leaves the body. So yes, Nachiketas could have asked, how can Atma leave the body? Because after all, what is Atma? Atma yena sarvam idam tatam. It is sarvagataha, all pervading. Hence, whether the body is live or whether the body is dead, the Atma is always there in the body. And that Atma can never leave because it is all pervading. It is there everywhere. The body itself is in the Atma. There is a question of the Atma separating from the body. And therefore, he is qualifying that it is not Tachit Ananda Atma that leaves the body. It is a Jeev Atma. The Sukshma Shariram quits the body. And therefore, is he says Prana Apana which is Upalakshanam. It's an indicator for the Sukhashita. Therefore, prana quits the body and therefore prana is responsible for life. Prana here, of course, meaning that Sukhashita. So, answer is that this prana is composed of what? A Pancha Mahabhuta, or the five elements. If you recall Tattva Bodha, prana is made, is, is generated by the Rajoguna of the Pancha Mahabhuta. Hence, Panchamahabhuta are inert. Prana also is inert. How can one inert subtle body give life to another inert gross body? And therefore, Yamaraj is clarifying here that Atma is the ultimate giver of the life. It cannot make the gross body alive by itself. Atma cannot give life to the gross body standing alone. And that is not because of the limitation of the Atma. But the limitation is of the gross body, the Thula Shariram, because Thula Shariram is so designed that it cannot directly reflect consciousness from the Atma. It can reflect only the con it can reflect consciousness only when it is in contact with Sukhshira. And therefore, this Thura it requires a medium to receive the consciousness. And this medium is the pipeline. And that medium is very important. The pipeline is a prana. Therefore, even though prana is important, that is prana here, of course, I'm, by saying prana apana, I am meaning sukshma shariram. So even though sukshma shariram is important, you must remember that atma alone is the primary cause for the consciousness for the sentience of the body. So that is the message conveyed in mantra number 5. Now you look at mantra number 6. So he says, Hantata idam pravaksyami guhyam brahma sanatanam yatha cha maranam prapya atma bhavati te gautama So, hanta. So, hanta we have seen before it is only an expression. So it can mean well. So, oh well. Hey Gautama, Hanta Gautama. Well, oh Nachiketas. Gautama is another word for Nachiketas. So, Hanta Gautama means, hey Gautama. Oh well, oh Gautama. Pravaksyami. I am going to tell you, idam guhyam sanatanam. This secret or this eternal secret. Idam sanatanam guhyam. This eternal secret, which is what? Brahman. So the eternal secret Brahman, I am going to reveal to you. So te here means to you. So Brahma te aham pravaksyami. I am going to reveal this very secret Brahman to you. Not only that, cha also. Yatha atma bhavati. How does the jiva fare? What is the travel of the jiva? Maranam prapya. After the death of the physical body. This is the mantra meaning. So, hey Nachiketas, I shall reveal to you this eternal secret, which is Brahman. And not only that, I shall reveal to you what does the jiva do? 
after the death of the physical body. So he doesn't say physical body, maranam prapya. You have to understand that maranam happens only to the gross body, to the stool of shariram. And therefore, when this gross body dies, what happens to the jivatma? Very clearly indicating that something survives the physical body after its death, which was something which Nachiketas asked long, long ago. So here, Yamaraj is introducing two topics. What is the real nature of Jivatma as, as discovered by a Jnani, as discovered by the wise people? That is the first topic. And what is the fate of the Jivatma after death? So obviously, we are talking about the Agnani Jivatma. It cannot be the Jnani Jivatma for obvious reasons. And Gautama is the name for Nachiketas' father, the name is also used, being used for Nachiketa himself. So he says, Hanta idam pravakshami. Well, Nachiketas, now I am going to teach you Maranam prapya yatha yatha atma bhavati. What will happen to Jeevatma after the death? And Guhyam Brahma Sanatanam. What is the real nature of this Jeevatma, which is Paramatma only? And it is Guhyam because it is not known to many people. Most of the people do not know. Therefore, it is a secret. And it has always been the same. And therefore, Sanatanam eternal. So, very small introduction over here because he is talking about what he is going to say only. So, no need to expand further on that. Then, the seventh mantra, he says, Yoni manye prapadyante shariratvaya dehinaha sthanumanye anusayyanti yatha karma yatha shrutam. So, here you have to look at the first word, yoni manye. So, it is not yoni plus manye, it is yonim plus anye. Yonim plus anye. And you take out the anye from that first, first word and you connect it to dehinaha of the, that is the fourth word of the first line. So, anye dehinaha. Some other jivas or some jivas. What happens? Yonim prapadyante. They enter the womb. For what purpose? Shariratvayaha. For the acquisition of bodies. And <coughs> anye. So that is again sthanum anye. So from there anye to be removed. Anye. Other people. Anusayyanti. They assume. Sthanum. So sthanum here. Is the form of a jiva. Which has no capability of movement. Sthanum literally means. In one place. So that jiva which can have no movement, which is what? What jiva can have no movement? I mean, come on, you're look around you. Stones. Stone is a jiva. No, no. When you are not alive, does he mean that? Tree, not trees, plants, trees. Yes, plants and trees. Okay, so those jivas which are not capable of movement, which are plants and trees, plants and trees are jivas very much. Okay, why I'm saying is that it's not just enough to listen. <laughs> While listening only, your brain should be an overdrive. What do those words mean? And therefore, Anumanye, anum, plant form. And then he says, how? How is it that some jivas get a plant form and some jivas get other bodies? So he says, yatha karma, according to their own karma, and yatha shrutam. Shrutam here means upasana, according to their own karma and according to their own upasana, which they have done in previous lives. So after maranam, so we are talking about the Agnani Jeevatma, okay? After Maranam, the Agnani Jeevatma, what, what does it do? Prapadyante. It travels. Okay. Now here immediately what chapter of Gita should you recall? Travels. 
those who have done, I mean, Bhagavad Gita, okay. The others, of course, are not expected to answer. Eight. Chapter eight. What does it say? That the jiva can travel through two paths. paths. Either Krishna Gati or Shukla Gati. If he travels to Krishna Gati, it will take him to Swarga Loka. If he tra travels through Shukla Gati, it will take him to Brahma Loka. There is also one more which is not mentioned there. Adhogati, which will take him to the lower Lokas. Other than Swarga Loka and Brahma Loka. Now, connect the words Yatha Karma Yatha Shrutam to this Prapadhyante. How will you connect? You have to connect it using this eighth chapter. How will you connect? We just said travels to Krishna Gati travels through Shukla Gati. How are you going to connect that to the words of Yatha Karma Yatha Shratam? Guys, come on. So, so let's get a of Yes, the, the jivas that take the the path of the moon, they re, will return to the to oh, I'm to, 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 to acquire a new body. So uh, the better karma, the higher loka. The lower good yes, karma. Very general statements. Okay. You have to connect specifically to yatha karma yatha suratam. This is how I will understand that you understood both Bhagavad Gita and and the Upanishad. Oh, Macharaji, so the one who does both karma yoga with upasana will go towards the Brahma Loka. The one who's only doing the karma yoga goes to the Swarga Loka. Okay. And... So, Yatha Karma, the person that does only karma and does not come to upasana, he takes Krishna Gati. And the person who does karma plus upasana, he takes Shukla Gati. It's very clearly laid down in chapter 8 okay, of the Gita. And the one who is leads a life of, you know, which is not spiritual in nature and which leads a unhealthy life, he will take the adhogati, which will take him to lower lokas. So which means what that the jivatma actually travels. Okay. When Karmakanda, if you look at Karmakanda, the Veda Purva part, Jivatma means the Sukshma Sharira. And therefore Dehinaha here is not the Atma. The Hinahara here is the RC. Subtle body plus OC. Chidabhasa Sahita Sukshma Shariram. Okay. That is to say the RC. The subtle body reflecting the consciousness, which, which we call the RC. That is the meaning of the Hina over here. What will that subtle body do? Yonim Prapadyante. It will enter another it will enter a womb. A parental womb for taking the appropriate physical body and therefore he is born with an appropriate body. Now the parental womb can be either animal womb or human womb or insect womb or whatever. For the appropriate body is important. Or if he has done bad, you know, bad karma that he might be a threat to society if he is born with a body which moves. Therefore, the law of karma ensures annesthanum, that he is imprisoned. He is a jiva. He gets a body, but he is imprisoned in a body which is incapable of movement and therefore there is no threat to any to society from him. So there is a total lack of free will. So plant body is imprisonment implemented by Ishwara. And then slightly better body is animal body. So the prisoner gets parole, he goes home, animal body. The plant is called thanu since it cannot move. Natishthanti it is thanu. Animal body he can also get, right? Somebody says stones. Literally speaking, thanu means not moving. But here, what is the context? Yonimanya prapadhan, entering a, a womb, which is and getting a body. 
and therefore you are talking about jivas and that is why contextually sthanu cannot take the meaning of stone remember sthanu can be stone literally speaking it can be non moving being also but in the context contextually you cannot take stone because a jiva is what is being what is the context and therefore since stones do not have subtle bodies and that subtle body is what is essential to qualify yourself as a jiva okay when in puranas for example there is one person ahilya what is the story of ahilya uh, so... how do we take that take that way i was going to actually ask you this question <laughs> how would you please explain who is ahilya to everybody so there was this uh, rishi called rishi gautama and he has a wife uh, uh, called ahilya and you know they live a wonderful rishi life and there is this person called indra who is the king of the heavens and indra does what indra does he is a he is quite an impish being apart from being a uh, deva so for whatever reason literally he alone knows the reason but for whatever reason uh, he was very attracted to ahilya and one day while rishi gautam is away uh, he assumes indra dev assumes the figure of uh, rishi gautam indra dev assumes his figure his form and uh, you know he spends some time uh, in an adharmic way with ahilya when rishi gautam finally comes home he realizes what has happened he is able to decipher what has happened and he gets very angry and he curses his wife and he curses his wife to become a stone so she becomes a stone she becomes a rock and then much later on at some point in time lord ram comes to that place to that ashram of rishi gautama and he places he basically takes that curse away from her so that's the long story cut short okay so from the essence of the story i'll give you ahilya turned into a stone but ahilya also returned to human form so what is the extraction from there what should you extract from there was there a subtle body or not actually one understanding or one thing that i had thought of is that her subtle body went somewhere else obviously at that point in time and then returned when she got the form again that is one way of understanding it but otherwise i don't <laughs> no so what we have to vedantically the understanding is that she didn't become a stone she became like a stone the physical body became like a stone stone like because of the curse what is the proof because when rama came the physical body was restored to active life so sukshma shariram was always there sukshma shariram leaving one body cannot re enter it happens only in the puranas uh, once having left what is the main thing when the when the subtle body leaves the physical body dies so this story is that way it has to be extracted that way and therefore he says anusanyanti he enters what the plant body and very importantly yatha karma yatha shrutam it's an extremely important line yatha karma yatha shrutam your body your longevity the type of body you have how healthy it is how unhealthy it is everything is determined by your karma only and by now i should not be saying this but you know for just reminding myself two types of karma are always there which determine this one is prarabdha karma and one is agami karma so prarabdha karma is already done with it is rectified so that is determining your body and then agami karma which is current actions from your free will they will decide how you live this life they will decide your future life remember that sanchita karma has no role to play in the current life it might affect your future life but it cannot touch you in this current life and as a human being supposing i have got lots of prarabdha karma bad prarabdha karma i can use agami karma which is my free will to nullify some of the negative prarabdha how i can you, i can use my agami to do lot of action generating lot of punyam and that extra generation of punyam 
with that extra generation of punyam, I can somehow reduce or manage some type of prarabdha. Not all types, the weaker prarabdha I can manage, I can reduce. And therefore, it is always free will and fate together which decides the consequence of the future. And it is not just karma. He says, yatha shruta mals. The amount of upasana that you have done, meditation that you have done, will also influence your journey as a jiva. So all this, the effect of free will and fate on your karma, you saw in one very famous verse of the Bhagavad Gita. I hope you remember. What is that verse? We had a very long discussion on that verse. What is the verse? So here I'm going to ask by name. Okay, Priyanka, can you please tell us what is the verse? Priyanka, are you there? No. Okay. Anybody else? Which is the verse in which we had a long discussion on the how prarabha karma and agami karma influence the results of action. No? Karmanyavadika rishte maphaleshu kadachana that verse, if you look at the notes, you will find the entire discussion. Okay. So now we look at verse number 8. So verse number 8 is Yaha Esha Tukteshu Jagarti Kamam Kamam Purusho Nir Mimanaha Tadeva Shukram Tad Brahma Tadeva Amritam Uchyate Tasmig loka sritaha sarve tadu natyeti kaschana etat vaitatu. So, esha purushaha. Esha is the second word in the first line. Purusha is the second last word. Esha purushaha. This atma. And what does it do? Yaha jagarti. So, that, that which atma, which is awake. What does it do? Nirmi manaha. It projects. And what does it project? Kamam, kamam. Various sense objects, various objects of desire, it projects. When does it do? Tukteshu. When all the, when you are in deep sleep, when all the senses, your sense organs have been withdrawn, in Sushupti Avastha, it projects. Tadeva Shukram. This, Tadeva Shukram, this Atma is always pure. Tadeva Amritam, this Atma is immortal. And Tadeva Brahma Uchyate, that Atma alone is said to be Brahman. And Sarve Lokaha Sritaha, Sarve Lokaha, all the worlds, Sritaha are, are based on, have as their substratum, Tasmin, on that Atma, on that Brahman. U na kashchara atyeti. Indeed, nothing is beyond that Brahman. Tat etad vai tat. This indeed is that Atma that you spoke about, that you asked about in Achiketas. So with verse number 7, with mantra number 7, the first topic, which is what, what happens to Jivatma after death of the physical body, that was completed. Right. The second topic. And where did Yamraj say that he was going to say, say all these things? So he says in the sixth, sixth mantra, Idam Pravakshyami, I will tell you, Yathacha Maranam Prapya Atma Bhavati Gautama, what will happen to the Jeevatma after death? That topic was completed in mantra seven. Now, Guhya Brahma Sanatanam. What is the nature of Brahman? That is the topic which is being taken up in this mantra. So, Yamraj is pointing out that the essential nature of Jivatma is the consciousness principle which we call as Akshi Chaitanya or witness consciousness. 
And how do we understand that? I am different from the body because the body is something that I experience. So if you remember our discussions on various uh, Prakrana Granthas, in the Jagrat Avastha, in the waking state, the mind has two roles. The mind serves as, number one, the instrument of perception. And number two, as the object of perception. It is both the instrument and the object. You remember this discussion? Mind can be either the instrument of perception or it can also be the object being perceived. What does it mean? When the mind is serving as an instrument of perception, what is the name given to me? The Jivatma. What are you when you are using the mind to perceive something? What are you? Bhokta. Takshi. No, neither answer is correct. You are the seer. But you are the pramata, not sakshi. Sakshi is, the word sakshi is used in a totally different context. Here, yeah, that will come to. When you are using the mind to know something, what are you? The knower. When you are using the mind to see the rose flower through the instrument of, through the actual tool, which is the eyes, what are you? The seer. Right. And therefore, there is a role in which your mind uses the sense organs to perceive the external world. It can use the eyes, it can use the ears, it can use the nose, the skin, it can use any of the five sense organs. In that role as pramata, as the knower, as the experiencer, you are interacting with the external world. Now, when the important thing is that to interact with the external world, which means for the mind to serve the to serve as a role in the role of experiencer, what is critical critically needed? What is needed? The five sense organs are needed. Without that, mind cannot serve as an experiencer. Correct. Right. Now, what happens? When the sense organs are withdrawn, when the sense organs are withdrawn, what happens? The mind is perceived by me. The mind becomes an object. When I am perceiving the world using the sense organs, then I am the pramata, I am the subject. But when the sense organs have been withdrawn, I am perceiving the mind, then the mind is the object. We discussed all this. Where? Which particular text? Upadesha Sharanam. Nope. Nope. Atma Bodha. Drishya Viveka. Okay. We discussed all this. So that is why I keep saying that all these Prakrana Granthas, they are not for amusement sake. You know, you have to digest each one of those if you are able to want to understand the Upanishad. Prakrana Granthas are basically meant to give you, you know, a better understanding of the Upanishad. Unfortunately, Drikdrisa Viveka is not available on YouTube because we had not got so technologically advanced as yet at that time. Spandana was not there. So, I don't know whether Spandana can, I can, I can try to find out where those, uh, where those lectures are, but I don't think I have them. So, anybody has them, they can give it to Spandana and she can put up something. But I'm sure they're all, all basically on the audio. No video was available at that point. In time. Maybe you can do that text later, once more for the new audience. Okay. So, as I'm saying, when the mind serves as the object, what is, my, what is my name? Sakshi. When the mind serves as an instrument, 
I am Pramata. <clears throat> now, in this is the question. In Jagradavastha, am I Pramata or am I Sakshi? Pramata. Pramata for the Ajani and Sakshi for the Jani. Well, anybody else? Pramata. Pramata. And this is Pramata. Anybody else say anything else? Okay. Well, let me ask you, during Jagradavastha, are you aware of the external world? Yes. Right? So that makes you Pramata. Are you aware of your thoughts? And when you are aware of your thoughts, what is the role that you are serving? Sakshi. Sakshi. Therefore, in Jagradavastha, both the roles are present. You are Sakshi as well as Pramata. But the problem is that the Pramata status is very powerful because you are interacting with the world. And because it is so overwhelming, the Sakshi status is overpowered by the Pramata status. And therefore, it is difficult to remember that I am the Sakshi. And that training in, in and through my status as Pramata to remember that even while I am doing the role of Pramata, I am also a Sakshi. This training is called Nididhyasana. Remember that in Swapna Avastha, in the dream state, the external world is absent. Why? Because the experience of knower is absent. You should come to the exact. Why is the external world absent? What is it? All, uh, yeah, go ahead. In Indriyas. Uh, the, the Indriyas are non-functional. The Indriyas are your gateway to the external world. And because the Indriyas are non-functional, Swapna was dream state. The Indriyas are not functional. And therefore, in this dream state, what is the object? You are, your role as a Pramata is not existing. Because Indriyas are not functional. And yet, you experience a whole world inside. That whole world is resident where? In your mind. So in Swapna Avastha, remember that your role is only that of Sakshi. You do not have a Pramata role at all. Okay, so that is what is being said here. Sushupteshu. Supteshu. It is not Sushupteshu. It is Supteshu. In the sleeping state. In the sleeping state, in the dream state, your Indriyas are not there. Are not are there, but they are not functional, and therefore the external world is absent because the instruments of perceiving the external world are no longer there, and therefore you are only enjoying the role of Sakshi. Now, this internal world which you see, remember, you are seeing the world, you are seeing, and that internal world is nothing but thoughts in your mind. You agree. The entire dream world is nothing but a thought in your mind and a collection of thought is called the mind. And therefore, when you are seeing the internal world, when you are seeing a dream, you are observing nothing but your mind. And therefore, you use the Vedantic law that the seer is not the same as the seen and therefore, you arrive at the conclusion that I am not the mind. Right, Because what are the dream objects made of? Every object in the dream, whether it be a tiger or a tree or, or a mountain or another world altogether, they are nothing but thoughts in your mind. Therefore, the world that I experience in my dream is nothing but my mind only. And because I am experiencing my mind, I, the experiencer of my mind, experiencer of my mind, 
am different from the object which is experienced, which is my mind. So from this mantra to the next to mantra number 15, the nature of Brahman is dealt with. So I am neither the body nor the mind. I am the Sakshi, the witness, consciousness, principle. And therefore he says, Esha Purusha, this Atma, Yaha Jagrati, which keeps awake. That Atma is awake when Sukteshu, when the Indriyas have been withdrawn in sleep, in dream state. And what does this Atma do? Nirmi Manaha, it projects. It projects what? A whole dream world. Where does it project it from? What is the raw material from which the dream world is, is uh, you know, created? It is the recorded experiences in your mind, which are the vasanas. And therefore, it presents to you a whole new world of people and sense objects, which is what is meant by kamam, kamam. The first kamam is people. The second kamam is sense objects. It presents to you a whole new bunch of sense objects. And every sense object in your dream is nothing but your own thought. So if you are seeing your wife or your daughter or your husband in a dream, remember that it is a husband thought, wife thought, daughter thought. There is no daughter in your dream. There is no object in your dream at all. The object the dream object is nothing but a vritti, a thought. And he says, this Sakshi Chaitanya, which is doing all this projection, Tadeva Shukram. It is blemishlessness. It is absolutely blemishless. It has no negative tendency at all. It has no dosha at all. It does not need to purify itself. It does not need a bath. It does not need meditation. It does not need anything. Because it is Atma itself. Our minds may need purification. Our bodies need daily purification. But the Atma, Tadeva Shukram, is eternally free of all problems. And also, Tadeva Amritam, that witness consciousness principle is eternal. And this completely pure, completely eternal entity, Tadeva Brahman, nothing but Brahman alone. This Sakshi Chaitanyam is the one and same as Paramatma. That Paramatma, which is the Srishti, Sthiti, Layakarnam, creation, the cause of the creation, the maintenance, and the destruction of the world. Who is that Paramatma? I, the Jivatma, am there because I am the witness. I am the one who is witnessing the mind. I am the one who is creating that dream world. And therefore, I, the Jivatma, am not different from the Paramatma. Putting those two statements together, I, the Jivatma, am the Srishti, Sthiti, Layakara. I am the cause of creation, the cause of maintenance, and the cause of destruction. And Tasmin, in that Jivatma, which Jivatma? That Jivatma, which is not different from the Paramatma, Tasmin Sarve Lokaha Sritaha. All the 14 Lokas, all the 14 worlds, they are all resting in that Jivatma alone. That Jivatma, who is none other than Paramatma, who is none other than I and me. And Kaschana Tada Na Akhiyati. No object in creation is beyond me. No object in creation exists outside me. Thus, every one of the 14 lokas is nothing but my projection, as in the dream. All the 14 lokas exist within my mind. This mind is nothing but maya. With which maya I create all these words. And therefore, etadvaitat, o nachiketas, you indeed are the Jivatma, who is the Paramatma, which you asked about. Okay. Any questions? Certainly a lot of it. Okay. 
Om Acharya. Yes. So, um, I'm still a little, a little bit confused about how Atma projects the the dream when when we say that the mind resolves, not resolves, but the Nyanindriyas are withdrawn. How does like uh, I know Atma cannot do anything, but okay. in the verse it may it sounds like as if as if Atma is taking those memories to construct the dream uh, world. So how does this happen? So let us take the example of the fire. <laughs> okay. You put your finger by mistake in the fire. I'm not saying you'll do it deliberately. By mistake, you put your finger in the wire. Or just to prove me wrong, you put your finger in the wire. fire. What happens? I burn. Fire. You say fire burnt me, right? Fire burnt me, yes. <clears throat> but burnt is a verb. Mm -hmm. Verb means there is somebody who has done the action which you are saying, action of burning. Mm -hmm. And somebody who does the action is a karta. And that karta must have a willpower. Therefore, are you saying that fire exercised willpower to burn you? Mm -hmm. How will you answer the question then? Uh, I, the nature of fire itself is heat. And it was me who took with my free will the decision to put a finger in the yes, fire. But your fire, your finger burnt because of its proximity to the fire. Yes. And it is the nature of the fire to burn. Mm -hmm. And therefore, similarly, see, it is the nature of the fire to burn is one thing. Mm -hmm. But if you had put a piece of diamond in it, nothing would have happened. Mm -hmm. So it is the nature of the fire to burn. And the nature of your finger to get burnt. Mm. So there is a second part of it that the instrument should be capable of being burnt. And the mind therefore is capable of projecting dreams. Mm. How does it project dreams? It is like a tape recorder. I don't know if you guys remember the old days tape recorder. I, now you're all you know, young generation. So maybe you've never seen a tape recorder in your life. You used to have two buttons. One is a record button and one is a play button. Right? Now, if you re record something, a song, let us say, you're singing a song and you record something using a record button. Then later on, when you want to hear that song, you press the play button hmm. and you hear the song. But it presumes that something has been recorded earlier. Right? If you are not done any, any recording, then pressing the play button would have been pointless, would have given you no sound except in the hiss of the tape running. And similarly, if a dream has to be projected, that the projection of the dream is based upon certain thoughts which are already there in your mind. Certain experiences, thoughts meaning experiences. Those experiences are already there in your subconscious mind or your conscious mind. And how can you have experiences? We said that it cannot be had in Swapna Avastha because you are not contacting the external world because your Indriyas are absent. And the, for earlier, what you did was you had a bunch of experiences when you were in Jagrat Avastha, either in this life or in previous life or a thousand previous lives before that. All those experiences are there in your subconscious mind. And when you dream, that mind is capable of reliving those experiences, but it needs proximity with the Atma to be conscious. Mm -hmm. And therefore you say, Atma created the dream. Atma just provided the environment for the mind to do what it is meant to do. Thank you. For understanding, you have to be very, very clear. Whenever you say Atma did something, it means what in Sanskrit we call it Sanidya Matrena because of proximity alone. The fan runs not because electricity makes it run, but by being in contact with electricity. The fan is designed to run, the light bulb is designed to burn. Each of these instruments do their functions in the presence of electricity.
Similarly, your mind functions sanidya matrena in the presence of atma. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, so there is not enough time to do the next verse, next mantra. So we'll stop there and we'll pick it up again in the next week. Thank you for your patience. Om Om Namah Shivaya. Thank you for your patience.